Once upon a time, there was a group of dads who started playing D&D. This is their story. Hello and welcome to D&D with Dads. We are excited to be back. The last episode was a heck of a cliffhanger. Some might even call it a bell ringer. Um, just to recap, the party had made it to the arena, which is uh, part of the upper levels of, of the halls of the Sleeping King. Um, and had, had discovered this hierarchy of uh, some of the denizens of the mountain, which, which was kind of a, a mix of the ordning. And some of you guys had uh, some sense about the, the kind of ordning and the, and the ranking of the giants. Um, some of those assumptions that you had based on your knowledge actually fit and made sense uh, in terms of, you know, there being cloud giants and, and frost giants, hill giants, you know, the, the kind of whole mix, um, stone giants, but you, you had not seen um, necessarily uh, like a, a ranking in terms of where they were seated in, in the amphitheater. So um, the cloud giants seemed to have the most influence though. And after their wagering, um, they had declared that um, their decision was to allow the Fomorian Narquart to fight everyone. And with that judgment, uh, the frost giant, um, a, a sort of referee, if you will, picked up, uh, went, walked over to pick up the bell and ring it. Now, what I'm going to say is that each one of you prior to initiative will have an opportunity for a round. So um, before we go into initiative, I'll start with um, Riff. So Riff, you, you, were, you were closest to your father, Dak. Um, and uh, Durant was kind of in a bit of shock and it actually stepped away. I don't know if you remember that, Eric, but um, you, you had kind of stepped away feeling like just this overwhelmed from this encounter, from this realization. But, but Riff, you were still kind of near your father and, and some of the other prisoners. Um, so I'm going to let you go first. Okay, so yeah, Riff, Riff uh, was basically just um, standing next to Dak after Dak gave this nice revelation. Um, so Riff is going to uh, turn to Dak and, uh, and talk to him. So um, Dak, you've got a lot of explaining to do, but I'm glad to see you're safe. Now listen to me. We don't have much time. I need you to do exactly what I'm going to tell you. All right. I want you to take you and your lady friend over there and everybody else, the rest of the prisoners and get them to the safest spot near the, like over near the door, if you can just stay huddled there. Now this next part is very important. In a few minutes, I'm going to call you out to come and face me, but you must not come out. In fact, I need to tell the other prisoners to keep you hidden in their midst. All of this is going on. Do you understand? Do not come out. The whole plan depends on that. Oh, okay. Are you tracking? Okay. Now, all right, take them now and go. Meta moment. <laughs> you say this, and in the heat of the moment, your words are going to be more effective. Um, I am going to make a roll for him to determine how much of this he's absorbing and or believing, which I have done now. You must make a roll, and I'm going to let you choose based on what your character is saying, the veracity of what your character is saying. Is Riff telling Dak the truth? If so, make a persuasion check. If Riff is deceiving whether his intent is good or not, make a deception roll. Yeah, this is definitely persuasion. This is truth. Twenty-one. Oh, yeah, that's more than good enough. All right, Dak. Dak seems he, he like is listening to you, but like looking at the Fomorian and the Frost Giant, and and then he like looks at you one last time. He's like, "Yes, yes, okay." 
Okay. And he so picks up the weapon that he had dropped in in shock and and kind of shuffles off. He's like, "Let's go!" And he he, you know, he and a few of the other prisoners kind of shuffle off. Okay. So then um, Riff uh, turns around and looks at Durant. And Durant's like probably still in a state of shock. Uh, Riff walks slowly toward Durant and gets face to face with him. And Riff says, "I have a brother." And then he like awkwardly takes. Durant and squunches in his head like to Riff's chest, like so, puts his head on him and says, "Wait, <laughs> yeah." And then, he, but like as he's doing that, he looks at everyone else, like I think are behind Durant, and says, "Guys, I have an idea, um, but just in case it doesn't go well, be ready to unleash on this thing." And then Durant's okay. reaction. Durant. Yeah, so, so Durant's reaction to that is a little bit um, uncomfortable to say the least. Um, you know, he's kind of like trying to pull away from, from Riff as Riff is trying to hold him with his headlock. And eventually, I assume he gets away. Um, this is one round, so that's it. You, 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 while you're there, you notice the frost giant walking over to that large bell. Um, Humphrey, you are standing about. I, got, I don't have anything. Yeah, you're standing about 15 feet away with Tuco, and and you see, you know, you saw Riff kind of like speak quickly with some of the prisoners. They shuffled off in one direction. You see the frost giant walking over towards the bell and and like stooping down to pick it up. Okay, I I don't have anything I'd like to do. Okay, Tuco. So Tuco is. Um kind of getting red his cheeks are like twitching a little bit he's kind of upset seeing the state of the slaves and stuff and he's taking some deep breaths trying to calm down he looks over to humphrey and says master humble bottom let me talk to this guy and he in giant he goes to the fomorian honorable fomorian there must truly be a mistake here down below, you have slaves. And up here, more slaves. And this place, this arena, glorifying violence. My master Lomaz of the Senator once taught me, only a fool believes violence is the only option when he discovers a mosquito on his testicles. Surely you are no fool. Let these slaves go. And we can all go about our business. Um, I'm going to let you choose. That was fantastic. I'm going to let you choose either persuasion or intimidation. But I want you to make a roll. Persuasion. Uh, ten. Okay. The Fomorian seems almost like bewildered that you are speaking, first of all, that you're speaking his language. And second, that you have the enormous, gigantic brass courage to speak to them, to speak to him in that fashion. Um, and, and he's like stunned almost for a moment. Smash cut to the outer hallway where Estroff finds himself, uh, it, just to give you an architectural idea, the architecture in the outer hallway is that perfect master craftsmanship of the stone giants. Um, there are latrines. There's, uh, there's even like a small, what looks like a dining area as if perhaps at some time there might have been a greater and larger population of giant kind who lived in the mountain and maybe they had like banquets and then went to their sporting events because you see like there's like a kitchen and there are tables and chairs, giant sized tables and chairs, but nobody's there. Nothing has been cooked in the kitchen. So it looks like maybe at one time in its, in its former glory, this this place was much more than just this sad kind of arena. But more importantly, Estroff, you 
as you were circling around that outer hallway that goes all the way around the perimeter of the arena, you found a set of stairs going up and no one is currently guarding it. At the same time, you hear giants. Do you speak giant? Does Estroff speak giant? No, I don't speak giant. So you hear, you don't understand, but you hear like a great uproar of like, and you hear, no, actually you wouldn't hear the bell yet, but you hear this like an uproar. Whereas previously it had been silent for a few minutes. You're by the stairs. What do you do? Do I hear the uproar from upstairs? No, from below, from in the arena. And you okay, know your so friends, you know your up. friends are there. You know your friends are there. So it's silent going up. And I'm assuming since it's an arena, it's built, you know, very much like you know, human stadiums. Yeah. Uh, are there multiple entry points? Multiple entry points being four, one in each cardinal direction. And the stairs that you I found now... going up, the stairs that you found going up are on the east side. So you, you're near the stairs. If you wanted to go back in the arena, you would go in the east side, which is to say kind of like the 50-yard line. Would it, so it would be to the side of the femorian. Yes. And your friends would be on the south side. The cloud giants in their seats would be on the north side. The Fomorian would be about, you know, near the cloud giants. So you'd be coming in kind of halfway. I want to try to position myself to the north entrance behind the okay. Fomorian and then just try to stay in the shadows for now okay. behind him. So I'm going to say you start moving around. Okay. Um, riff. You have one more short opportunity before because you see that at this point the frost giants stooping over to pick up the bell. Okay, good because otherwise all the other stuff wouldn't make any sense. So, so by now, Dak and the prisoners have all kind of gone over to the they, side yeah. somewhere, right? That was so, like instant. All right, so and and while Riff is doing this, he wants to make sure like the Fomorian is paying attention like to what's going on, um, specifically to what Riff is about to do. Um, so if he's not looking, it's like, is Morium kind of close enough by to us that he would follow what's going on? No. For, he's nowhere close. The Fomorian's on the opposite side of the, the amphitheater. Okay. From, but he, would he, he, would, he, would, he, it's lit magically. Okay. Would he see us though? Like, yeah. like, okay. So here's what, here's what's going to, this is the attempt at, at avoiding a bloody mess and, and maybe getting to the. The, the giant king sooner. So Dak or Riff is going to call Dak out to come face him in the arena, and he's he's hoping that Dak remembers not to come out. Yeah. <laughs> so Riff is basically like, Dak, get out here, and he's and Riff is going to cast um, major image, and he's going to make it look like he's going to make a major image of Dak to come out and to face Riff. First of all, you're going to make a performance check to okay. make this believable. Because. All right. You're, you're basically purposefully trying to act out this scene and convince right. the people around you and the audience that you have this, this encounter going. All right. Performance. Uh, 24. Oh, yeah. That's good. So really, this is going to be trying to deceive the Fomorian. So I'm hoping he's going to kind of pay attention. Anyway, uh, as the as the fake or the image Dak comes out, uh, Riff is going to be, okay, stop there and don't say anything, Dak. I wish I could trust you to stay here until the fighting's over, but I know you. You like to run. So to make sure that you stay, I've got a little magic trick for you. Hmm. And at this point, and Riff's been wanting to use this forever, he takes out a, uh, a stoppered bottle out of his backpack and he holds up the stoppered bottle and uh, he, he uncorks it and he's like, uh, Dak, do you remember the imprisonment spell? Imprisonment. Sorry, I didn't say that right. Um, and and uh, Dak nods and basically like, yes. Um, and so Riff's like, well, just to make sure to keep you safe and to keep you from running again, I'm going to keep you in here. And as he snaps his fingers, he wants like the image to sort of like smoke into the uh, the bottle and then like that. Okay. 
and this is all the, all this whole elaborate thing is just to try to get the the Fomorian to see the power I just, of. I rolled an insight check for the Fomorian. Okay. And I rolled a one. <laughs> um, the Fomorian is bewildered, and you see at multiple points like his eyes open wide and, and like he looks back at the cloud giants and then looks at you guys and then looks back at the cloud giants. And, and like, you could tell it's very obvious that he is now very worried about the foes that he is going to face. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I have any time with my action, but it would basically be Riff turning to the giant and just kind of looking at him like, what do you say giant, <laughs> you know? You could give up now and just take us and let us go see the, the your king, or we can fight. But you've seen my power. Um, you see the Fomorian. So you guys see the Fomorian, like, looking back at the cloud giants, right? Smash cut. Spider Astroff, you, <laughs> you are now going through the short tunnel entrance at the north side. And as you emerge, you see there are stairs, well, behind you that go up even further but no one's there because this is basically an empty arena but down from you you see the the cluster of cloud giants and you hear them like whispering back and forth but again you don't speak giant but you you could hear them whispering and you see one of them lean over like kind of stand up and lean over and and say something to the fomorian Is there any way to well i guess i wouldn't be able to understand them i want to roll insight on the intent as far yeah. as what it might sound like maybe not so great huh, a nine it's it's hard for you to interpret the intent because the giant language is such a guttural language that everything they say sounds intimidating but but that's the tone like you got like like as if the cloud giant was barking off an order to the fomorium um you see the frost giant even having seen this display from riff like looks over at the cloud giants and he he turns and and he looks at Riff and he looks at the Fomorian. He picks up the bell and he says, Let the arena begin! And now it's time for initiative. Fireball. And now, Fireball. now it's time for initiative. Everybody roll. 15. 22. Dang. Six. Nine. And. All right. <laughs> Negative six. Two go. <laughs> you see, hmm, well, you actually see sort of a lot happening. Um. Let me just put this into proper initiative order. Initiative. Tuco, you see that the sound of the bell seems to have um, almost like an a like a, a wake up sort of like alarm feature to it, and you're not really sure if it's magical or if it's just like psychological conditioning. When the frost giant smashes his fist up against the bell and it resonates throughout the arena, you see the Fomorian's like face kind of change and like his he grits his teeth and he starts walking towards you guys, not running, just walking towards you guys, like as if he's determined. But you, your reaction, your your battle senses are honed. You you feel like you understand, you see that he is walking with the intent for combat, not the intent to walk up and talk and make peace, but the intent for combat. Um, 
and you want the initiative. So what do you do? Seeing that he is intent on this, Tuco is just losing control. He's completely beat red. His cheeks are just twitching out of control. He sees the slaves again and drives them even further. And he says, you have dishonored my name and my family. Therefore, I'm going to take your dork and nail it to the wall. I'm going to cut off your boils and stick them in a meat grinder. I'm going to take your arms and stick them up your ace hole, you Martha Fergan son of a bitch. And ching. And as a bonus round, I guess he's going to rage. Okay. And then, um, go ahead. I'm going to make, I'm going to have you make an intimidation check. Seven. Please make it. Oh. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you basically you you psych yourself up, but you and you you don't even care at this point whether or not the giant's intimidated. But you you get yourself psyched up and so worked up that you just whip out your swords and you're like ready to go. <sighs> um, now, question is: Do you, are you holding your position or are you advancing towards him? So just to give you an idea, he is currently 120 feet away. So, you're, you know, there's no way you can make it to him in one round kind of thing. But I thought I was closer because I thought I snuck up and got toward the middle of the arena. Oh, that's right. I, I'm sorry. You, you're 60 feet away. What I want to do, I don't know if I can do it. But I want to run, jump, and then using my gloves of swimming and climbing, climb up and get on his shoulder. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, um, that might be possible. So let's think about this. You have, as a rogue, you can use dash so you can definitely get to him with your move and your and your dash move um oh but you can't you can't do that because that's a bonus action uh you use your bonus <laughs> action to activate rage right i will I, you i will let you retcon this I'll, I'll let you choose okay you can either activate rage and move to get to him but you won't be able to have an attack this round. Or you can not activate rage, move, use your bonus action for dash, and have an attack this round. I'm okay not having an attack. I just want to get up on. Okay. Get up on it. Okay. So, so you're, you're rage, raging, moving. I absolutely dash, and plus my movement, and then climb up them. Okay, but you can't rage and dash. So you can you can rage and and burn double move and get to him. And I'll let you make an athletics roll to climb up on him. And then no attack. No attack. That, that's fine. All right. So go ahead and make the athletics check with advantage. Seventeen plus nine, twenty-six. You you just like you dart off right full speed and and as you're running you get within like five feet of him you jump and kind of like spider monkey climb up the side and and to the top of him and when i get up on top of him i look over to uh riff and i yell hey blondie play us some songs this guy's gonna need something appropriate to go to his grave with and I'm going to try and, like, get his attention. I'm screaming in his ear. All right. Um, put a quarter in you today, man. This is awesome. <laughs> he definitely, he he kind of, like, like the, the Fomorian, like, is still walking towards the group, right, with, with murderous intent. But he kind of moves like somebody who, like, 
found like a beetle crawling up him. He like, oh, like, and, you know, he's a little bit distracted, but not completely. Um, but that, that was your move. It is now his turn. He is going to Murder. grab you, which he does. Make a strength check. Is that a strength check or a save? Because I, with rave, I, rage, I have the just strength. You, it's a strength check, but don't forget to add your bonus for rage. Oh, okay. So 20. Yeah. So you, so he wins, but so you are grappled and he throws you. You take one hit point of damage as you hit the ground. So you kind of like roll. Actually, you don't take any hit points of damage because you have, you're raged and you have damage resistance. So he grabs you and throws you off of him and you kind of like roll with the fall and, and kind of stop yourself from getting like perilously injured. Um, and he continues moving towards the group. How far does he throw him? 20. Let me see. He has a 23 strength. So 20 feet. Um, 20 and a half feet. Sure. Okay. 20. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Astroff, you are up from your position in spider form. You can see the, the battle has begun. I'm roughly how far away from it? From the Fomorian? Mm -hmm. You're about 90 feet. Okay. You're like you're like thirty feet down to the floor of the arena, and then he's sixty feet, you know, across. How close am I to the cloud giants? Oh, you're you're fifteen feet away from the cloud giants. Would I be able to move in front of them as a spider, and pop up as Estroff, and still call lightning, or would that be my full move of move and then pop up? Oh. All right. So move. To come out of your wild shape is what? I believe it is a bonus action. All right. If it's a bonus action, then I think you can call lightning. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause for just a moment while we check, while we, sorry, not while we check that, while we double check that, because this could be kind of clutch if you call lightning against them. So we're going to pause. So just to recap, Astroff, you're going to spider crawl down um resume your normal form and then you wanted to use call lightning against the fomorian yes and resuming my form early is a bonus action so we are good to go all right so you 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 basically you're like that little that little you know ball that that rolls down each of the levels of the 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 sports arena and gets to the bottom, and then floop, you pop up. The cloud giants are absolutely surprised, um, but you you can cast your spell. So you cast Call Lightning on the Fomorian. Yes. Um, and what does he need to do? Is that a... Uh, that is a dexterity saving throw against a 14. That is possibly one of the best spells you could choose because the Fomorian has horrifically bad dexterity. He fails. So how much damage is he going to take? All right. So that is 3D 10s. All right. Oh, nice. That's 19. Nice. He is like, <laughs> like you see is twitching with the electricity. Um, nicely played. This brings us to Riff. Riff, make an insight check for me. Uh, insight, eight, just eight. Hmm. It's hard to determine 
because your comrades have kind of gone head to head with the Fomorian, but the direction in which the Fomorian's walking is not towards the other prisoners and not really towards you. The Fomorian seems, seems to be kind of walking more towards Durant, who's not far mm -hmm. from you, but... Um, so what, what do you do? Okay. So, so Riff basically, he's got the bottle in his hand that supposedly has Dak in there now. And, uh, he puts it in his backpack and, and says to the Fomori and he just kind of shouts out, I've still got another bottle for you. If you, are you sure you want to go through with this? And then, um, for his, he's going to do a bonus action and use mantle of inspiration, um, where he takes on a wondrous appearance. And basically after he had just sort of said this to the Fomori again, he sort of looks like he lifts off the ground and like his cloak is billowing and his eyes are gray just to try to make this guy like, this is for real, dude. We have powers. Okay. And um, so everybody gets uh, four people get, all right. So yeah, that's everyone else. Um, you guys all get eight temporary hit points and you can move up to move up to speed right away without any opportunity um, attack of opportunity from the Fomorian. Okay. And then, so that's my bonus action. And my action is just dodge, just in case okay. the guy comes after me. Okay. He, he is like not, he kind of like sidesteps and continues to walk towards Durant. But you notice that like his regular eye is like watching you as if he doesn't trust you. Um, Durant, you also, well, all right. So Humphrey, you're, you're kind of like looking at this from a bird's eye view and you, you can see that from your angle specifically that the Fomorian seems to be going towards Durant. Like he's, he's kind of like sidestepping where Humphrey is. So I'll ask a very, I'm sure surprising question to everybody is, is there anybody else within 20 feet of him? Uh, no. Well, I mean, now that he, you, he picked up Tuco and whipped him across the arena, no. For 20.5 feet. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, I guess, I mean, if everybody insists, I guess I'll have to cast Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the Fomorian has to make a, uh, a deck save. Yep. Not, again, not a great ability of the Fomorian. Oh, uh, uh, that's a five. So how much damage is that? 31. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. Um, so within this round, <laughs> he's been electrocuted by lightning and then scorched with an enormous sphere of, of flame. And uh, threatened by a beauteous creature. <laughs> that's <yeah>. right. Uh, <laughs> he also got a splinter. Durant, you see all this happen, and you see the Fomorian is is wounded, but still most definitely walking towards you. It is your turn. Okay, uh, so question with Mantle of Majesty. Uh, that movement piece, could I have taken that movement yes. immediately? I, as... I will let you take that. Okay, uh, how far away am I? Uh, well, this round, you'd be 60 feet. All right, so I need to get within 30. So you can move 30, so I'll move 30 with the mantle movement. Okay, but I, that, that means I still have my movement technically left. Yes. Okay, uh, I'm going to cast Blindness on the Fomorian. Ooh, uh, what is his save for that? What's uh, That is a, let me double check, I think it's Constitution. Uh, it is constitution. It's against a 14. Your spell seems to not impact the giant. That's fine. Uh, so I guess what I'll do instead is uh, I'm going to take the rest of my 30 feet of movement and move 30 feet away. Okay. 
and that'll be my turn. So you you kind of got like inspired by Riff and you like ran forward and you're like blindness. And then the, the Fomorian looked at you and gnashed its teeth and you're like, oh, and you, you kind of like ran <laughs> back much. and it, it looks mad. Um, okay, that, believe it or not, brings us to the, the prisoners. Now, I am making a couple rolls and these are morale rolls because the prisoners are more or less crapping themselves because this Fomorian is fearful. One group of prisoners rushes towards the Fomorian. And one of them hits the Fomorian. Wow. With a sword. And this, this person just looks like they're, they're like inspired by you guys being here. Like they have hope and the Fomorian, you know, like the, the, the person slashes the Fomorian with the short sword and the Fomorian like kind of like winces a little bit. Um, so nods to him with approval. Nice. Um, and this then brings us back to the top of the order. Now the Fomorian um, has obvious scorch marks from the fireball and is still smoking from where lightning hit it. But Tuco, you are only 20, let's say two feet, 22 feet away. So it is your turn. So I wanna go up to him, behind him, and I want to uh, take both attacks, my primary and my secondary hand attack, and I'm gonna try and hamstring him. Okay, and just so you know, if you're doing that, if you move up behind him, you actually get flanking because that one, well, actually there's four, there's four survivors attacking him, but the one that hit him, can, you know, is considered a threat. So you actually get flanking. So you, you, you can that. get, yeah, you can get your sneak attack. So let's do your primary attack first. You run up there kind of go around behind him. Uh, 18. Oh yeah. You cut him. You cut him right upside the back of his leg. Uh, roll that damage. Seven plus four is thir uh, 11. And sneak attack, 2d6. Eight. 11 and eight, 19. Okay. And then your uh, secondary attack. Seventeen. That's also a hit. Roll damage. Seven more. Okay. Uh, did you add your rage bonus, by the way? Oh no, he didn't. Uh, but I don't. But he I'm does not using that. He's finesse. Not using a strike. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. And uh, then I want to. Uh, Narquart. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to yell over to uh, Estroff and say. Flame boy, we need some light over here. Um, you you do. Uh, Narquart is very angry at the um, insolence that all of you have for attacking him. So he is going to be making his own attacks. Um, ooh, that is definitely a hit for 17. One of the four people who boldly strode forward is immediately mashed by the Great Club. Um, the second attack um, is for you, Tuco. You have to roll a roll a d20 and tell me what the result is. 15. 15? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. You, it doesn't, it, well, it, like right after it smashes this one person, one, one of the prisoners with its great club, it turns and looks at you with its huge eye and you feel a sense of, of just terror coming from this eye. Um, 
and you 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 actually made your saving throw, which is good because advantage hurt a little bit. My rage gives me advantage on no. saving throws. Uh, you made your saving throw. It's a charisma save. Um, and you only take half damage, so you only take 11. And that goes off by temporary hit points first, right? Yes. And it is now Estroff's turn. Estroff, the uh, Fomorian hit moved forward to assault its enemies. Um... Do you want to move your lightning? I do, and I also want to move it away from Tuco so that the five by five range right there is still hitting him, but not Tuco. Okay. But before uh, Darth Sidious him again, I want to lean back to the cloud giants and go, I hope you enjoy the show. And then hit him. You know what? That is excellent. I'm going to have you make a persuasion roll. Um, and see how the giants react to your entertainment. <laughs> see, that is a 12. <laughs> All right. The giants don't do anything. They, ju they just kind of look at you curiously. Uh, like in the same way that if you were like in a park sitting on a bench and a squirrel came like right up next to you, how you'd be kind of curious about it. That That's how they look at you. All right. Um, your lightning is a deck save. The Fomorian, what's the deck save? Uh, uh, 14. 14. He fails again. How much damage? Uh, that is 23. Oof. All right. I need to do a little calculation because y'all have done a significant amount of damage. To the tune of quite a bit. Um, it, it once again, the Fomorian is just, just getting fried. Um, which then brings us to Riff. Riff, you see the Fomorian is, is basically pretty occupied with Tuco and a couple of the survivors um, and is not looking in your direction or the direction of the other prisoners at all. What would you like to do? Okay, so Riff is very unimpressed with this giant for not paying attention to the, the sheer immense power Riff obviously must have to have done these things, trapping a guy in a bottle. And so Riff is like, look, giant, just <laughs> what is your deal? And he's going to, it's like, you don't know me, but, and then he's going to like try to, he's going to like drop his voice a couple of octaves. I'm going to do a terrible job, but he's like, giant <laughs> you didn't even ask who i am i'm the harbinger of your worst nightmare and he's gonna cast a fear spell on him Ooh. i'm the one who knocks <laughs> something has to get to this guy uh what is his save for the fear spell okay uh 15 oh but you asked what save that is or wisdom yeah, I think it's I think it's wisdom. Fear, 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 fear. Wisdom. That makes a difference. He made it. Oh. Are there any effects if he makes? Uh no, he's just uh says each creature succeed on a wisdom saving throw or drop whatever they're holding become frightened for the duration. Okay. So I guess he just, he just saves. So he, um, he continues in his rampage. Humphrey, you are up again. So I imagine there's people within 20 now. I have, I have oh, one yeah. more. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll do three living survivors and a Tuco. So <laughs> and a Tuco, ah, those pesky Tucos. Um, I'll do a firebolt. Okay. Give me that roll. 18. That's a Not hit. Bad. Roll damage. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. That was, I rolled damage for that one. Hold on. Shit. 
Um, my hit is uh, it's a thirteen to hit. Miss. Okay. Um. Okay. Durant. Uh, all right. So, um, the guy who went down, who got hit with the club, did he go down, or is he still standing? Yeah, he's dead. Oh, like that was a dead, one dead? hit, one kill, dead. Like so dead that spare the dying wouldn't help. Um. You feel like he's broken, dead. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, in that case, um, how fa- I'm 60 feet away still, or is, am I closer at this point? Well, you moved back. You're 30 feet yeah. away. So he kept moving toward me, I guess, is the question. Yeah. Okay. So then I am going to, because I don't want any more of the prisoners to, or the slaves to take damage here, I am going to actually stride up and uh, get around his, his uh, legs. And then I'm gonna say to him, by the light of Daener, you will not see another day. And I will cast Sacred Flame, which is a deck save. Ooh, deck save it is. Um, unless the DC is only two, he fails. Okay, well, it's 14, so. Uh, that would be 15 damage. Well, all right. All sorts of damage. Lightning, uh, fire, radiant damage, conventional melee weapon damage. Sharp metal. <laughs> Infrared, uh, convection. Yeah. There's just a whole bunch. All right. The three survivors inspired by your speech about Daener, decide to, to slash out and no, none of them hit. Um, this brings us back to Tuco. How tall are his legs? Uh, Tall. He's huge. <laughs> what an interesting question. He's like, so you you stand like you don't even reach his groin. You know what I mean? Like he's he's a big. He's huge. He's literally a huge giant. So that that's kind of what I wanted to do. I, after my speech before, I wanted to st- stab up towards his groin. Okay, you may try. Remember that mosquito? I am that mosquito. <laughs> 20. 20 is Cheap a shot. Hit. Definitely roll damage. Are you proud of yourself, Tuco? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a- <laughs> Four, nine, and then seven. 17. Okay. Now he's sterile. Yeah, he <laughs> reaches. I got offhand struck. Yet. There will be no more children. <laughs> 18. That's a hit. Nine more. Oof. Man. He is he is struggling. But it is his turn. He, in in great anger and rage, is going to look at Durant. And Durant, you are going to have to make a DC. Well, just make a charisma save. Tell me what it is. <laughs> you act like that's a thing I can do. <laughs> Uh, that is a natural 19 for 18. Wow. That's incredible. That, that is incredible. Oh, that Daener. That's right. He's a sleeper. He'll come through in a clutch. Um, 
So you you were only going to take half damage, which is sixteen. That is half. Um, Don't forget the ten hit points. Yeah, I lose the ten hit points and then eight of my. Own. And then he's not done. Then he gets his conventional attack of um, smushing. Ooh, <laughs> that is a total of twenty-four to hit. Is he hitting me? No, uh, he's he is hitting. He just. 3d8 plus 6. Good lord. Ah. He smushes another um, person. That Uh, person is sufficiently smushed? Yeah. It makes a squishing sound. Astroff, you were up. I had this like vision of like this club just going straight down and then the splat. (laughs) Mashed potatoes. Yeah, mashed potatoes. Are we doing electricity, Astroff? I am, but I also want to put a little flair into it. I'm thinking like handstand or like spin around and shoot or maybe even like bottom first. <laughs> shoot lightning from you were, between you were my concentrating legs. on this, so you have to make an acrobatic <laughs> roll. <laughs> or a performance. Your choice. Performance or acrobatics, however you want to do it. Uh... Oh, acrobatics is slightly higher. It's 21. All right. You <laughs> you, you actually do like a little parkour move where you like hand flip up onto the railing while you're staring at the concentration of the lightning and you do a, a spin and flip back down and like bow to the cloud giants while the lightning cascades behind you. Uh, oh what, my God. Which will determine how effective that is after I make his saving throw. Damn it! <laughs> Hell! He failed again. How much damage? That was just 17. Uh, he is he is in bad shape. I have failed every one of the lightning saving throws. Um, Astroff, you, the cloud giants are now sort of like impressed slash curious. Uh, Riff, you're up. All right, Riff is kind of ticked off now because the stupid giant has ignored like all the. Riff's been trying to keep it classy by coming up with these inventive ways to to stop this fight. He's like, "Fine, you you're just gonna be that way." What's his name again? Narquart. Yeah. All right, so so Riff does um, vicious mockery in the form of a of a limerick. There once was a giant named Narquart who smelled worse than every orc fart. We humbled him then. He fell on his chin and was carried away on a dunk cart. <laughs> nice. That doesn't oh. deserve Didn't want to go that low, but this stupid giant is not impressed by everything else I have. So he's he, got to succeed on wisdom. He uh, fails. All right, um, so, so he has Rightfully so. So he's, he takes 2d4 psychic damage, which will probably be two. And yeah, he'll, he'll have disadvantage on his next attack. Uh, that's a three and a... One four total psychic damage. Okay. Um, Sorry, guys. That was a shameful. worthy, a worthy, uh, uh, a worthy bluff, um, Humphrey. You see that many of your comrades are near this guy. Firebolt away. Let's do it. Come on. Fifteen plus. Uh, it's a uh, 20, uh, 21. That's a hit. Roll damage. A hit. Okay. Come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of everything. Let's go. Oh, 11 figures. Um, he, he is scorched. Uh, Durant. Okay. So, Continuing on from the last turn, um, do I actually still see his large eye? Yes. Okay. Since you refuse the enlightenment of Denaire, may your eye never see the light of day again. And I'm going to sacred flame his eyeball. What? 
Uh, 16. Uh, makes it. Never mind. Okay. No damage. Uh, Tuco. There's still one um, civilian that left, right? Two civvies left. Are they close to each other? Yeah. They're on the other side of you, basically. Yep. So I want to move around to them. If I have to, I'm going to use um, my skirmisher so that I can move up to half my movement without an opportunity attack. Okay. And then I want to push them away. You fought valiantly. It's time to go make sure that the others are safe. Okay. And then, then I'll turn around and attack the giant. All right. You do not get your sneak attack bonus for this. Okay. Ooh, 16. That's a hit. All right. Eight. And offhand, 17. Hit. Nine more. Good God. You guys have done a lot of damage to it. Uh, Narquart turns to you, and you now need to make a um, charisma saving throw. Natural 20. Okay, nice. you succeed, um, which means you only take half damage, and half damage is 17. Is that all you got? Uh, no, it's not. He rolls again. Because <laughs> then he gets his great club attack, uh, which is a 23 to hit. Yep. Uh, 3d8. Six. You take 15 damage, which is bludgeoning because you're raged. You only take half of that, so it takes seven. Bring it. Um, Durant. No, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Astroff. All right. Let's see if we can impress him again. I'm going to do another acrobatical flare. Okay. Uh, strike at him. All right. Let's see. Oh, 17. Uh, the cloud giants, like, you notice that they're basically not even watching the combat now. <laughs> they're, the cloud giants, it's like when somebody's at a sports, like a live sporting event, but they're like watching the coverage on their phone. That's, that's like literally what they're doing. They're like watching you with like the combat in their peripheral, but you can see that they're all like enthralled with your like performance. Um, he has to make a, another save, I'm assuming, for the yes, for 14. The lightning. All right. This time he's got an 18. Oh, he makes so, it. Is it, what so, is it, half? So that's half of 10. So he gets five. <laughs> he gets a little, he gets a little shocky but not like last time. Um, all right, this puts us at Riff. Sorry, I forgot to bring this up. Um, did the did you remember the disadvantage for the Vicious Mockery when you had when he attacked Tuco? Oh, no, damn it. Well, that wouldn't have affected the eye, but it would have affected the, uh, hold on a second. Yeah. So I just rolled the second roll at disadvantage was a two. So Tuco, instead of uh, you get seven hit points back, basically, you did not get hit with his uh, great club. Yay. Clutch, clutch call. Thank you. Um, so Riff, you are up. How close is, how close would Riff be to? Um, You're I... 25 feet away. Okay. And are you able to tell us how much? wobbly he is is he looking like pretty bad yeah okay all right 
Riff is um <laughs> he's just like, okay, this guy's not buying my tricks or anything. So he's um I'm sorry, meta question too. Are we can we know if if he's hittable with the magic weapon or is that just we just have to try um and he see. seems to have been taking damage from all of the damage. Damage. Okay. All right. So Riff is Riff is just gonna like just fine. We're doing it this way. He's just gonna run up and uh try to jump up as high as he can and, and stab with his rapier at this dumb giant. Okay. Go ahead and attack. Oops. <laughs> I can't believe that. You probably can't read it, but it's not 20. Nice. With his rapier. All right. So that's uh, add in your damage dice to the eight. Uh, so 1d8 plus three. So, so is that an 11 then for the um for the nat 20 for the yes and then and another additional die okay another four so 12 total what? it says. can't be right eight plus three is 11 and you roll the four so that'd be 15. Sorry. Yeah, your math's better than mine. All right. So you he's still up, but this like you guys are swarming him like a bunch of little bees just attacking him from all these different sides. And he is he is clearly like a little more woozy. Um Tuka looks over to Humphrey and says, Face man, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Go get him, boy. <laughs> um Humphrey, you you are up. I guess firebolt again. I'm just flying above watching all this happening. Okay. I missed. All right. Durant. Uh, so when he turned to face Tuco, is he facing away from me? Yes. Doesn't matter. Sacred flame. Okay. He got a 16 on that roll. Never mind. I should be doing something else. Um, Durant, make a Arcana check. Okay. And Astroff, make a Arcana check. Uh, that's a natural 17 for a 26. Yeah, way higher than my 11. All right, so Durant, you you see some of the wounds on the Fomorian close up. And where just moments ago he looked very woozy, he seems to have healed up quite a bit. Yet you did not see him chanting, moving his hands in any somatic gestures. Um, what did you get, Estroff? I got an 11. Yeah, you don't notice shit. You're too busy flipping around. Uh, <laughs> top of the order, Tuco. Did I notice this too? No. That I would have had you roll. You're oblivious. You're in a rage and you're sweaty and bleeding and angry. More music for the sword dance. 18, 26. Yeah. Uh, that's one. You, you get to add in your sneak attack uh, damage too because Riff is on the other side of him. So that's six. Eight. And then my offhand attack. 13, 20. Yep. Uh, 11 more. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. Uh, 
Um, Durant, time to make another charisma saving throw. Oh, awesome. This is fantastic. Uh, that's a natural 17 for a 16. You succeed. Uh, which means you only take nine damage. Cool. Instead of the 19. Um, attack number two. Tuco. Oof. Uh, that's a 22 to hit. For 20 damage from the Great Club. So you only take 10, my friend. Thanks, yeah, that's courtesy of Rage. Um, this brings us to Estroff. All right. We're going to shake it up a little bit. I only have to keep one hand and my vocals on Color Lightning. So with the other one, I'm going to pump them up and do a little jig with my feet the whole time. So <laughs> <laughs> that'll be uh, 11 for performance. <laughs> Um, let me see. The, the, all right. So half the cloud giants are just, they're like, they're chuckling. They're like getting a kick out of this, but you see a couple of them like get up and they move down like 10 seats so that you're kind of not in their sight line. And you notice that they're exchanging these huge coins, coins that are like the size of a, of a dining plate. For you that like they're, they're just like handing them back and forth and and you see that they're pointing between durant and tuco hmm. as if they're like making a bet yeah uh uh riff you're up oh i'm sorry astroff you i i needed to roll your the saving throw hold on and if i'm noticing uh, that is there any way i can move the strike of lightning to where it kind of obscures their vision. Sort of so a little bit behind. Where yeah. still, you're saying where it still hits him. The, yeah, where it hits him, but kind of gets between their line of sight. Well, and, no, because then you nah. would hit you would hit either Riff or Tuco. Okay, then I'll just so keep it where it is. He got a 13 on his save. What's your 14? Okay, so he's gonna take the damage. And that will be 16. Oh, man. Um, make another Ar Arcana check. That would be a dirty 20. Oh, no. Sorry. Arcana. That's just the 19. Okay. You... You just saw those cloud giants betting. Um, yes, which brings us to Riff. All right, now Riff is up in this thing's ugly face. He's going to first use a bonus action and do another mantle of inspiration um, for everyone, giving them eight temporary more hit points and letting them move away. I'm afraid that some of my friends are getting pounded here. And then that's bonus action. Action is going to be casting Dissonant Whispers. As he's right there in his face, his wondrous appearance is just whatever thing he thinks would creep out, just making this weird, strange face at this guy. They're probably like a kitten face, actually, something that would probably just disgust it <laughs> and, um, and whisper to it, you know, whatever Dissonant Whispers. He's got to make a wisdom uh, saving throw oh, again. Man. See... You guys have ex you're you're exploiting the weaknesses very well, but uh, it would have been better if it was somehow a charisma save. Uh, that is a minus one. <laughs> no, wait, that's not possible. I looked at the wrong thing. Sorry, uh, it's a three. He still fails. So what's his what's his suffering? That's gonna be fifteen damage, Ooh. psychic damage. And and he must immediately use his reaction to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Okay. Uh, he Run away, little boy. Now, here's the question. He runs 
away from you, does Tuco get a attack of opportunity? I was right up on him. All right. You get a regular roll, no advantage. But regular... Regular Plus attack is- roll. Yeah. Uh, that's a natural one. Yeah, so you're so surprised. Like, you saw Riff, like, run up and, like, be like, <laughs> and, like, some weird <laughs> shit in front of the Fomorian's eye. And the Fomorian's like, <laughs> and he, like, jumps back and begins running. Uh, Humphrey. I'm just doing my grind. Okay. So let's see if I get lucky this time. Oh, I do. Okay, 21. Yes. Oh, actually higher than 22, but okay, yes. cool. Now let's see if I how this turns out for me. 18. Hey, nice. Um, Humphrey. Yes. You, you have been flying around the top of the arena firing off literally fire in different forms and when you you were up there from your bird's eye view you saw some weird thing that i'm not sure if you've ever actually seen riff do but whatever he did scared the bejesus out of this fomorian and the fomorian took off running you you saw your opportunity as it's running you aimed your firebolt and you shot it and you shoot it down What's this look like? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess I'm just shooting my firebolt. It, I'll Help say this. Here. It, it's running away. It has no clue that you're even up there at this point. You fire your firebolt down. The firebolt hits this thing in the back of its head. And it it just, it's like, just flops. And, and the sound and the reverberation of this huge giant hitting the stone floor can be heard like in an echo. Like it's like, like a tree falling. And then immediately Um, after that, you hear Durant say, Hey guys, it regenerates like a troll hit it with fire. Oh yeah. You, 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 uh, you see immediately the reaction of the cloud giants is is not emotional they're not like angry they calmly exchange coins with each other um you see the hill giants outraged and they're just like and they like throw their food in the into the uh arena like at you guys there's just chunks of animal flesh being thrown at you guys and like the hill giants are angry uh the stone giants kind of stoically do like a a minor light golf clap for all of you uh they're very (laughs) also unemotional uh the frost giant referee strides over and and you see he he kind of pokes at the fomorian and then he looks at the cloud giants and he says they win zuko wants to run over jump on the the fomorian's back and scream out up to the uh spectators in common we're here for the giant that sleeps who else do we have to fight to get to the giant who sleeps and then then his rage leaves up and he realizes what's happened and he just goes completely white and then he changes into giant and says "Please, uh, let me translate for you honorable sirs we are here for your entertainment and i think we have provided quite a bit of attainment entertainment and you cloud giants if you bet on us i'm sure you made quite a profit (laughs) we would like to entertain the giant that sleeps as well please show us to him if you can you see one of the cloud giants stand up and and he he motions for for you guys he like motions you over and you, you see he leans forward and he begins speaking with Estroff. You guys are too far away to hear what he says. Do you guys approach? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
while you're approaching, the cloud giant leans forward to you, Astroff, and he says, you are very entertaining little, little man. You, you make us have laughs, smiling. Uh, you are, uh, you are, uh, how do you say this? You owning these people, these entertainers, they are part of your shop? Yes, uh, yes, I bought each and every one of these. Uh, you, they are very entertained, good. We yes, are like yes, I, I'm quite proud of what I have. Uh, he says, uh, you have more uh, of these for, for make shows? Uh, yes, but I left the less expensive ones back home. Hmm. Hmm. And you see he turns and he's like explaining this to the others in Giant. Um, the, the rest of you guys kind of stride over and you're, you kind of get to the other side of the arena where the Cloud Giants are. Um, and and the, the lead Cloud Giant like looks out and he, he sees Tuco and in Giant, he says, he says, uh, do they all speak our language? Or must I speak in the common tongue? I speak both common and giant, but I don't believe any else of my party do speak giant. He says, uh, I will speak in the common tongue. It's been a long time, though, so you'll have to suffer with me. Um, and then he turns to the rest of you in, in broken common. He says, uh, you make funny show, laughing good. Uh, tell little flying man come down we sp we speaking with you now i come down okay he says uh is long time since good arena show we laughing fun fun um you making show again uh and he points to, to Astroff. He says, bring more little fun people for make show again. And you hear one of the other giants say something. And Tuco, you, you hear the other giant in giant tell the lead giant that's talking to you um, that, that says, ask them if they can make more illusions. And then, and then the, the, the lead giant that's talking to you says, um, He's like, you, and he points to Riff and he says, you make very uh, fun, fun uh, picture image uh, for, uh, uh, and he says in giant, and, and he looks at Tuco and he says, how do you say genie in your common tongue? And then he, he's, he says, ah, yes, for make genie bottle. It's very good fun. Uh, you have more humans and people for making show come to the mountain? We think our encore should be for the giant that sleeps. He says, uh, why, why you want to see a uh, king who sleeps? We have we other agendas. Yes. Things that need to be done in the world below. If you enjoyed this, he Tuco. will enjoy our next even better. He turns Things in to, the lands of men. He turns to Tuco, and in Giant, he says, uh, what this one say about they have other? We have things we need to discuss with the king. How can you talk? He, in Giant, he's talking to Tuco. He says, how can you talk to the king? He sleeps. Do you have a, a wizard who can speak in the dreams? We have a very powerful wizard, as you've seen. He, he looks around the auditorium. He looks around the <laughs> arena. He's like, uh, where? He, goes, I, he says, I can see invisible. I don't see. You didn't see all the, the fireballs and the lightning and the. He goes, oh. Powerful magic users. 
he 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 nods and then he returns to the rest of you guys in common he says uh king who sleeps you want to see him uh you can i take you to see him you know what to see it's when you look with little eyes and you you see things yes is what you want can we uh can we take a short rest before we do what's a short rest just a few minutes to gather our he, wants, he wants to sit down ah yes um we will make you can sleep with other little people and have foods uh when we come back we take you to see king who sleeps and then in giant he yells out to the frost giant tuko you understand that he's barked off orders um he he looks out at the frost giant and he's like he's like hey bring all these little people into there and give them food and let them sleep we will be returning tomorrow and the frost giant's like uh the cloud giant looks at you and he says you uh make very good funny uh is is good and tomorrow we take you to to see king who sleeps i want to do something for him real quick uh, i just want to ask him said my lord I would like to give you a gift in hopes that you might help us with an actual audience with the king who sleeps. And I want to take one of the good berries and I want to cast druid craft and then plant growth. Druid craft is going to make it grow, actually sprout from the good berry. And then plant growth will actually bring it a little further from that. Is a good berry an actual seed, like a normal berry? I would assume so. Is it just, yeah, I guess it stands to reason, right? I don't know. You guys what if know we, this druid stuff. What, what if we say please? Will that, that get us anything? <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, he, he, he looks at it and you, you see he kind of examines it. Let me see if he would know what this is. You know what? I mean, it's he's, he's slightly he's, exotic, uh, right? Yeah, he he is he is very impressed. He says, "Littlest man make good magics. Can use for um, for banquets. If it will appease you, my lord, can make more for tomorrow. Yes." Uh I can make some. I did not bring many with me, but I brought some. Little people go sleep and eat food. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we coming back and take you see King who sleeps. My name Vanom. Van Nome. Probably introduce yourself, Astroff. <laughs> Thanks, Van no, We want to take the <laughs> we want to take the freed prisoners with us as well. They won their they, freedom gallantly. They no see king. No. Oh no. 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 But you, they should be a little free later. Tomorrow, tomorrow we take you for see king. Then talk after. Just one question before you go, Van Nome. Have you heard of Alyssa Hanaduthis? <laughs> I will make a roll. No. <laughs> she is very smart. Read a book from her sometime if you come across it. Hmm. She is elf? She is tiny person like me. 
Human. Mm. Elf. Uh, human? No. Elf? Okay, elf. We will go elf. No. Elf ears. Point. Yes, round ears like me. No. I only... You say she is very... Very knowledge? Yes. She is a strong warrior? Yes. She... But she human. I don't know. Uh, I know strong warrior, very wise elf. Uh, long time ago. Not, not so much human. Human not live very long. Human... Uh, not live very long. Long enough to do some good. Elf live a long time like giant. Can be smart. Uh, can be uh, read books, you know. I read books. Do you have any books that would interest me? He's gonna give you a coloring book. Says <laughs> you, you, you speak giant. You read the giant. Not right now, mm. but I have a friend who does. King has great library, but only in giant. I have a way to read giant. Mm. You, you are wizards too. Sometimes. Riff pulls out his pan flute and starts playing the Jeopardy theme song. <laughs> like the double Jeopardy do 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 on the pan flute. He says, You little people, very interesting. You go eat and sleep. Tomorrow we take you see King. If you know elves, do you happen to know um, an elf by the name of um, Lomas from the Sanhedrin? Mm. Only have two elves ever here who live from Marina. One is Phalor. Phalor given freedom. He leave. The other is elf woman. She also win in the arena. She chosen by king. Do you know her name? She is keeper of king who sleep. Her name Akiri. What does Keeper of King Who Sleep mean? King Who Sleep must be cared for every day. Can we meet with her? You will meet tomorrow. She is steward of King while he sleep. Thank you very much. He nods. And when we get to be alone, um, Tuco wants to turn to all his comrades, gets down on the ground on his hands and knees, bows his head to the ground and says, Masters, I am ashamed. I have dishonored myself. You've seen the dark side and I hope that you will forgive me. My master has tried teaching me how to channel the dark side into the dance of the swords and it has worked for so long but when he was taken from me 
uh, the training was not yet complete and I'm not been able to master it as, as it, you have seen today and I must ask humbly for your forgiveness. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm oh, a okay. bear sees the good in all men. You guys are saying this as um, as you guys are, are kind of being led when you when you were kind of led to the the prisoner chambers um first of all you you like once you guys are kind of led in there and the the frost giant leaves the rest of the prisoners like cheer you guys they're like that was incredible and they they like toast you guys uh their their you know their food and their drinks are all kind of very very basic kind of like gruel um, but they, they are like elated at, at their survival. Um, yeah, the fact that them, they're still alive. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that they're still alive, but like every one of you is like a walking living legend in their eyes. As you guys kind of like gather, um, you, you have food, you have drinks, um, you, they, they, they like draw baths for you in these very basic, like wooden barrel baths that they have. Um, at a certain point, and, and all of you guys will, will reap the benefit of a long rest, provided that you don't like decide to arbitrarily go try to explore this um, mountain. Um, your, a couple things. Um, some of you might actually recognize one of the names that the giant mentioned, um, specifically Durant or Riff or Astroff. Uh, I'm going to have you make intelligence rolls, straight intelligent rolls, add, add your modifier to the roll. 17. Four. All right. 16. So Durant and Riff, when, when uh, Tuco was talking with uh, Van Noem, he mentioned two names. Uh, Riff, you know one of those names, but you also know the other, surprisingly. Uh, and, and Durant, you know one of those names as well. When he mentioned the elf warrior Phalor, you guys remember when you were heading from Seven Echo up to Dragon Falls, you encountered a party of elves from Sendrin. And one of those elves was Phalor. Uh, and, and you guys may in fact remember, well, I don't know. Do you remember who they were going to see? Yeah, um, the wizard in- uh... Yes, Rylan. Rylan. So um, Phalor is, Durant, you, you recognize that name. Now, it's been months and months and months since you saw that party of elves. So you find it curious that this giant kind of happened to mention that Phalor was an elf that was here who won his freedom. Uh, the other name that he mentioned was Akiri. And Durant, you are not familiar with that name at all. Um, smash cut to about an hour and a half later, you've all been fed, bathed. Uh, most of the prisoners are just happy to be alive. They're, they're all kind of sleeping. Some of them were talking with some of you guys about getting out of here. And like, do you think there's any hope? Do you think that, that, you know, they'll, they'll let us go that kind of stuff. Um, what else do you want to do? Durant I, I, is staying as far as possible away from both Riff and Dak. Okay. So Dak actually, Dak actually kind of several times tries to like approach you through the crowd. And as you move away, he sort of like realizes that you are not ready to talk. So he turns his efforts instead towards Riff. Yeah, Riff is Riff is fine. He he looks forward to catching up with Dak, seeing what kind of mischief he's been up to. Um, 
and, and, you know, outside of the context of, of the arena, you, you look at Dak and he is, he looks much older than, than he did the last time you saw him as if, as if the stress of whatever has happened in that, you know, intervening time, uh, has really caught up with him. Um, you are not exactly a young man anymore. Certainly not the boy that you were, you know, the last time you saw him or young man that you were, but, but he looks like he's aged a lot. Um, when he finds you though, he, he says to you, I, I owe you more than just an apology. I owe you so much more. I owe you a debt that I will likely never be able to repay. Why do you owe me? We, we were always friends. We got along. You taught me some good skills. I mean, I would, I figure you owe me explanations at least. Is that what you mean? Yes. Whenever you're ready. I don't know that I will ever be ready, but I do know that I cannot die without you knowing the truth. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I do not see these giants as being merciful and freeing us. I don't think they even look at us as people so much as livestock. How did you even get here? How did you get captured by them? I suppose it was a foolish quest. Shortly after the last time we saw each other, I encountered a group of elves on the road. One of them was Phalor from Sendrin. He informed me that your mother was not, in fact, dead. My mother, not Durant's mother. I'm talking about my mother. Your mother. And um, while he's talking, Riff gets the uh, the case out of his out of his pack and hands it to Dak, since it belongs to Dak anyway. I brought that with me. Keep talking about my mother because I never and I never bought your explanation of how she died when I was just a baby. I couldn't explain how she died. The part about the tree is true. How she died is not true. She didn't fall out of a tree. Your mother was one of the most skilled warriors that I've ever known. Yeah, I, I never believed that for a minute. There had to be something. Don't just fall out of a tree. No. But after what I saw in the arena, what you and your comrades did, it was a reminder very similar of what happened. Your mother found something in that tree. Some kind of magical rune. And somehow she activated it and a bolt of lightning came from the sky and struck her and she disappeared. I want to roll insight. Crazy old deck. 12. You feel like he's telling the truth. You know that he was never 
He was never a good liar. He liked to tell stories and tall tales, but he was never a good storyteller. Um, you feel like he's telling the truth. And, and he looks at you and he says, it, it was beyond my understanding. It was something that I witnessed without fully comprehending. Uh, I've never been one to, to, to comprehend the magic of, of any of the kind of folk who've ever been my friends, whether that be the, the elves or the forest gnomes, they, they wield knowledge, knowledge of the magical world that we do not possess. Your mother disappeared. Arik, you must understand that. And I didn't know how to explain it to you. I didn't know if she was claimed by the gods. All I knew is that a bolt of lightning struck and when my eyes cleared, she was gone. Now, years later, when I encountered Phalor and he told me that your mother was alive, I implored him to help me find her. I implored him to take me to her. He told me, he warned me that this was not a good thing. He warned me that she was safe and yet we would not be able to reach her. He tried to tell me to, to find peace in knowing that she was alive and safe. And damn me for a fool, son, I should have. I should have found peace in that knowing, but I didn't. I was far too restless. I, I, I couldn't accept it. I, I needed to know for myself. I needed to see her. And, and moreover, I needed her to know about you. I sold everything that I had. Phaler and I made our way to the north. First to Ilrafan and then to Tavalar. and then to the mountain. We had a company of men. We made our way up to the third level before we were utterly decimated. We were taken prisoner. The trolls. We were taken prisoner and we were made into objects of entertainment for the giants. There was a special tournament once a year where a prisoner could challenge for their freedom and Phalor made that challenge and won. He defeated an Etten by himself. Nice. He, and he was freed. And I, I do not know how much time has passed. It has certainly been at least a year, I think, since he was gone. But what I have discovered since we were here, since we've been captured, is that your mother is very much alive and that she has been the servant of the king who sleeps for all of these years. The giants have never and will not take me to see the king who sleeps. I do not know if I will ever live to see your mother, but she must know she must know about you. And you must know that my other son will need you. Though I'm sure now he rejects me. He does not know about the fullness of my life. I led another life, a life, a life that I do not regret, but a life that I needed in my time of sorrow. In my mourning and grieving for the loss of your mother, I found solace for a brief time in the arms of another woman, and I fathered a child. And he again glances over to Durant across the chamber. And he says, your brother is a good person, despite my failings as a father. 
he's turned out to be a fine and wise man, but but he will need you. This makes so much sense. There was there was always something between me and Durant. <laughs> I, I you know, I just thought it was just a uh, teasing him for fun kind of thing, but he's actually my kid brother. Well, kind of half brother. Don't worry, Durant. Durant, uh, he, he's he's still learning how to interact socially with all kinds of all kinds of beings. He'll come around. I'm guessing you weren't there a lot for him in his early years. I I feel shame. I failed him as a father. I failed him in many ways. In some ways, I I tried to make up for the loss of time that we had. But you, you were given a kind heart by the forest gnomes. They, they taught you compassion and love, which is above all a trait that I hope Durant will come to find through, through his camaraderie with your fellow adventurers and through and by the blood that he shares with you. Jack, save your strength. Thank you. Thank you for finally telling me things I needed here, but save your strength. We're going to get you all out of here. Um, and I'll, I will go with you to talk to Durant um, tomorrow. Okay. It's been a long day. I think we, we could all use some rest, but I appreciate you finally staying still for once and opening up to me. He puts his hand on your shoulder and he says, my son, I, I hope and pray that we will gain our freedom. But if it is not meant to be, my one desire is that you and your brother live, that you survive and that you escape this place for it is truly doomed. And that is where we'll end this episode of D&D with Dads. Make sure that you hit the like and subscribe buttons so that you don't miss the next episode. And thank you, as always, for your support. We will see you on the next episode, everybody. Peace out. Well, hello, and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy, the wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.